colouring the edges of books is both decorative and functional. By sealing the fibre ends at the head and tail, it reduces the amount of moisture that can get into the paper of the book. Often only the head is done because that is where the dust accumulates when the books sit on a shelf and the dust attracts the moisture. The simplest way to colour an edge is just to paint or wipe on some ink or thin paint. I'll demonstrate two ways. The first, I'll sand the edge to prepare it to get rid of things like these guillotine marks that I'm demonstrating here. And in the second method, I'll prepare it a bit further uh, so that I can burnish the edge with an agate burnisher to come up with a really nice edge. Now I always like to put talc on the edges to stop the pages sticking together. Most of these methods don't uh, absolutely require it, uh, but it is very frustrating when the edges stick together and the colour comes off and then you have to guillotine or plough off the edge and start again. So I just find it easier to talc the edge to make sure that the pages aren't going to stick together. Just fan out the pages, put some talc on the edge and then rub the talc in with your fingers. I'm going to clamp the book in a nipping press between a couple of pressing boards. This is a fairly straightforward square back binding that I'm doing. It has a small amount of swell at the spine, so I'm going to put a couple of grey boards uh, on the book and just pull them back slightly from the spine so I don't crush the spine. By having the book extend a few millimetres out from the pressing boards, I normally don't get paint on the pressing boards. Uh, I don't have quite as much luck today. So using a fairly fine, in this case 240 grit sandpaper, just sand the edge until you've got rid of all the guillotine marks and any major imperfections. It's a good idea to clean up the dust after you've done the sanding and I forget to do it and I'll regret that later. I have a series of brushes from very clean to very dirty. So when dusting off this edge, that I use my very dirty brush. You can use a wide variety of media to colour the edge. I think the most foolproof, and the one I use the most often, is acrylic ink. And then I thin that down, so about a 50-50 mix of acrylic ink and water and then I'm just going to paint that on with a soft uh, natural haired brush. I start paint towards the ends so I sort of start roughly in the middle and then paint towards the the foredge and the spine and I do that till I get a good coverage while trying to not overwork it. Now is when I'd wished that I'd cleaned up the dust earlier And I'm going to use the industrial hairdryer to speed up everything, but I often just let it dry naturally over an hour or so. And I'll do this two, three, four times, whatever it takes to get a nice even colour. And once I'm happy with it, I'll give it a bit of a brush burnish, which is just a natural haired brush that's fairly soft but a bit stiff and I'll just go back and forth and give it a good brush. You could wipe on a bit of beeswax before doing this as well. If you do use beeswax, don't apply it directly and I'll talk about that later. Hinge off the boards in case they've stuck a bit and then whack it on the bench a couple of times and it's done. So I want a green end as well, so I'm going to go through this method again and that'll also give me some time to talk about uh, edge colouring. So this process is basically very simple. You smooth the edge, press the book together, 
to compress it to stop the colour getting down into the pages and then you paint some colour on it. What makes it complex is the very wide variation in the properties of different colouring media and the paper in the text block. I regularly have failures where the colour comes off or the pages stick and I'll mention that to people and they'll comment it always works for me. The difference is that I like to experiment. I like to use different media and I'll do it on different paper and I'll often change things a little bit like I might use a sponge and I'll try and make a, a marbled pattern. If you're using the same colouring media and roughly the same paper, you'll soon work out your own system and it will work just about every time for you. But if, like me, you want to experiment and use different media, then you should also experiment before doing a final book. In the second process I'm going to demonstrate, I'm going to prepare the edge to a level of smoothness that it would even be adequate for solid edge gilding. So to do that I'm going to put the book between some gilding boards. Now these boards have been used recently and I haven't re-sanded them so they're going to have a bit of a dip in them. So I'm going to use a woodworking plane to take off the top edge and get them level again. I usually only colour the head, so without thinking I prepared a set of boards that are too short to do a fore edge. To prepare this edge I'll use a card scraper to take out the imperfections and then I'll use very fine sandpaper to produce a very smooth finish. Of course I'll start by talking the edge. I'll talk it each direction and rub the talc in. The text block needs to be aligned exactly with the top of the boards and I'll put it as deep into the press as I can get it but still being able to grab hold of it. So I only want it sticking out 5 to 10 millimetres. To use the card scraper, wrap your fingers around the ends, putting your thumbs in the middle of the back, and bend the card scraper slightly, tilt it forward at about 45 degrees and then scrape along the surface. So we've used a curving action so it comes down at the end nearest to you and lifts up as you go off the end of the book. When it stops making shavings then the burr has either been bent back or broken off and you move to another part of the card scraper. If you're doing a head or a tail, then put the spine towards you and scrape towards the fore edge. Of course, the shoulders would be protected by either doing it in boards or using some waste boards to protect the shoulders. Once all the noticeable imperfections are removed, then move to very fine sandpaper. In this case, I'm going to use 320 grit. Always sand in the direction of the paper and never across it, just like with wood. Once it's been sanded, don't touch the surface with your finger, no matter how much you want to touch it to see how smooth it is. For this fore edge, I'm going to use gouache. I'll dilute this more like four times to one because of course the gouache is much thicker than the acrylic ink.
Now it's the same steps as before, uh, paint from the center of the book out towards the ends and do enough coats until you've got the consistency of color that you're after. It wasn't until after I'd finished videoing that I noticed I'd got a little dot of yellow on one of the ends. Of course you wouldn't normally do the three edges different colors so you wouldn't really notice that drop of paint uh, if it had been the same color edge. After the final coat is dry, give it a good brush burnish and then put on a layer of beeswax. Now, never apply the beeswax directly, so you always do it indirectly. My favorite way to apply beeswax is to use a soft piece of cotton. So I'll rub the cotton on the beeswax and then the cotton on the book. Some people like to rub the beeswax on the palm of their hand and the idea is the heat of your hand softens it and then rub your thumb on your palm of your hand and then run your thumb over the book. And some people also like using a rough leather, the suede side of leather. So once you put a, a thin coating of beeswax and you won't be able to see it really, then it's time to get the agate burnisher out. Start by applying light pressure and go across the book once and then back with slightly more pressure. Do that four or five times. Apply another coating of beeswax and repeat the process. And you can do that three or four times until you reach the level of shine that you're after. There are many, many different shapes of agate burnishes. Most of them are designed for people gilding three-dimensional objects. Bookbinders use two um, broad categories of burnishes, the flat one like I'm using now, and a dog tooth burnisher, which is mostly used for doing rounded four edges. And instead of going across the grain, uh, you go along the grain with that one. The flat burnishers come in two types as well. This one's completely flat with the rounded edges. The rounded edges are important so that you don't get lines uh, on the edge. Uh, the other type is slightly curved. I've been lucky enough to do a course on graphite edges with Fred Pullman and he has this wonderful burnisher with a slight curve to it which is wonderful to use but I haven't been able to find a supplier of that. Talus have them in their catalogue but I've written them and they, they said that they're out of stock and they don't know when they'll ever get them back. Now there's lots of variation in how bookbinders do coloured edges so this is just how I do it. Um, I'd love to hear about other people's experiences and tips. If you've enjoyed this video please hit the like button and if you want to be notified of my future videos please hit the subscribe button. Until next time, cheerio.